on Friday, September 6, 2019, Antonio Delgado, a 54-year-old IT worker, told his parents he was going out on a date and told them not to worry if he came back late that night or spend the weekend somewhere else as he headed out the door. This was the last time that Antonio would be seen alive. A missing person report was made on the 10th of September after Antonio failed to wish his sister a happy birthday, something he had never done in his life. His body was discovered just three weeks later, on the 27th of September, buried in a field outside of Pedrola, a small Spanish town. How did an innocent date with a stranger from a dating app lead to such horrific consequences? Let's find out. Have you ever used any dating apps trying to find that special someone? I mean, I think we've all used them. The Tinders, the Bumbles, the Plenty of Fish. And honestly, there's just so many of them nowadays that it gets overwhelming. Now, there's a specific app that is quite popular if you reside in Spain called Badu, where people look for both meaningful relationships as well as short-time fun. Well, in 2020, three men from Zaragoza matched with a good-looking woman thanks to the app. A woman that went by multiple aliases, such as Daniela Mendoza, Bella, or Dulce Angel. The woman posed in sexy ways and incited all three of them to meet up with her for some adult fun. Florin, a 37-year-old Romanian man, was the first one to take the bait. He matched with a certain Daniela Mendoza, who said she was a young girl of Dominican descent but was born in Zaragoza, Spain. Florian agreed to meet her on a lonely bridge that connected the village to the countryside. When he arrived, she stood next to an old Mercedes, but he didn't give it much thought. Daniela wanted him to take her to her grandmother's house to pick up her jacket, as it was getting quite cold, to which he agreed. On the way there, however, the dirt road became difficult to drive through, and lighting became more scarce the further they went. As they arrived, Two men approached his car and dragged Florin out of the car, throwing him to the ground, tying his hands and feet with rope and taking his shoes off so that he wouldn't escape so easily. You know what will happen to you if you don't cooperate. That's what they said as they tased him multiple times and held a knife to his neck. The man had no choice but to give them his credit cards with the pin codes. After doing so, they took him out to an empty cane field and simply dumped him there. Florian made his way to a house where an elderly woman and her son helped him to get free and call the police. Unfortunately, by the time he reported what had happened, the Badu account had been deleted and they had already found their second victim, thanks to a new account by the name of Bella. Julian, 59-year-old man, matched with said Bella who now claimed to be a Brazilian who was into elderly men. They agreed to meet up at a train station, seeing as Julian didn't know how to drive a car. Once he arrived, he saw her on the other side of the tracks, waving her phone. As he approached her, she greeted him affectionately and told him they were about to have a great time together. They got into her grey old Mercedes and took a similar dirt road to the one that led to the countryside. On the way there, Julian was suddenly struck with a metal wrench by someone sitting in the back seat. He instinctively ran out of the car, but was chased down by a tall man while Bella shouted, Kill him! Don't let that SOB run away! The couple unfortunately caught up to him, broke one of his legs, and tied him up, just like their previous victim. Bella took out a gun and pointed it at him. As her accomplice took the 650 euros Julian had in his wallet. They were now asking for him to call his family, requesting a ransom of 12,000 euros for his release, or else they would cut off one of his fingers. Julian bravely refused to give them any of his family contacts and told them they might as well kill him. Realizing they weren't going to get anything else out of him, they covered his head with a hood and left him out on a field, badly injured. He crawled and hopped his way to a nearby road until a tractor driver passed by and took him to a hospital. Hey, my name's Nick, and you're watching Homicide Harbor. If you made it this far and enjoy the content, please leave a like and subscribe. It really goes a long way.
Now, let's get back to the story. If I don't have a good time, I'll be back soon. If I don't come back at the weekend, I'll go straight back to work on Monday. Those were Antonio Delgado's last words as he headed to his date with Dulce Angel on September 6th. Four days later, and after no sign of him, his parents filed a missing person report describing what he wore, had on him, and the new red CC220 Coupe Mercedes he was driving. Just three days later, on the 13th of September, police found a man by the name of Antonio who had bought the distinctive red Mercedes from an ad website called Mil Anuncios. The car, which at the time was valued at around 50,000 euros, was being sold for just 21,000. Antonio met the owners of the car outside a supermarket. The man provided the ID of the owner and claimed it was his father's car, which he was trying to sell to make some money. The buyer handed him 11,000 and agreed to pay the other 10,000 later. The seller in question was actually captured on CCTV outside the supermarket. And as you might have already guessed, it was not Antonio Delgado. The footage was shown to local police who immediately identified him as Mohamed Ashraf, a 35-year-old Moroccan man who had an extensive criminal record, which included drug trafficking, domestic violence, and armed robbery, along with two active restraining orders from his previous partners. On the 27th of September, the body of Antonio Delgado was discovered buried in a ravine, naked and with several broken ribs, head trauma and ligature marks on his hands. The scariest part of all this is that forensic scientists found fragments of dirt inside his lungs, meaning he had been buried alive. Just five days later, on the 2nd of October, Mohamed Ashraf and a young Venezuelan woman by the name of Hedangeline Arieta were arrested after being positively identified by the survivors of the robberies. During their arrest, Hedangeline asked to go to the bathroom, from which police later retrieved a gold chain and a ring, which were later determined to belong to Antonio Delgado, directly implicating the couple in his murder. During trial, police provided pieces of cars that remained in the couple's residence, implicating them with the other two robberies, the taser and the gun that were used in the second robbery. Along with that, police had records recollected from Ashraf's criminal bracelet, a special device that is given to people accused of domestic violence that placed him at the locations where the robberies had taken place and served as undeniable proof of his guilt. The ironic part of all this is that the woman who had baited these men and led to the death of one of them, Hedangeline, had arrived to Spain initially after requesting asylum from her home country of Venezuela. Initially, they were both given sentences of 34 years behind bars. But luckily enough, the Supreme Spanish Court reviewed the case and increased their sentence to 59 years for each of them. Now, I don't want to be rude or anything, but I genuinely hope neither of them ever gets out of prison. This was the tragic case of the Badu Hunters. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you all next time. And until then, stay safe and be very careful who you go on dates with. My name is Nick, and this is Homicide Harbor.